Knowing God, what an incredible thought that you and I, mere humans, here today, gone tomorrow in the grand scheme of things, could actually know the living God, the creator of the universe. And yet that's exactly what the Bible tells us. Uh, in uh, the, the book of Ephesians, uh, where Paul was writing a letter to the Ephesians, he starts the letter praising God for this very thing. He says, Praise be to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven because we belong to Christ. Before the creation of the world, he chose us to be his in Christ, to be, to be made whole and holy and blameless before him, standing before him covered with his love. And because of his love, his plan has always been to adopt us as his children. And he did this because he wanted to. It was his pleasure and purpose. Did you notice in that scripture passage that the, the words in Christ and belong to Christ? And that is because the only way that we can know God is to know Christ. Now we might know something about God. For example, we can see the grandeur of the world that he has made if we have eyes to see it but we don't really know God personally that way. It is only through Christ that we can actually know God. Let's say, for example, that you wanted to know a famous person personally, perhaps the President of the United States, or maybe a famous athlete or actor or movie, or, or movie star, perhaps a religious figure like Billy Graham. Well, you might know something about Billy Graham. You might have even met him once, but you don't really know him not like his children, Franklin and Anne Graham, know him. There's an interesting discussion in the 14th chapter of John where Jesus is talking with his disciples and trying to prepare them for what is about to take place. He says this to them. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come back to take you to be with me. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And then Thomas, you remember doubting Thomas, he said, we don't know where you're going, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. In that same letter to the Ephesians, Paul says this to them. He says, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, I keep giving thanks to, to God for you, and I keep you in my prayers. And this was his prayer to them. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better, that you will see clearly and fully understand who God is and all that he has done for you. So how do we do that? Know God better. Well, we do it by spending time with him, the same way that you know anyone better. And God has revealed himself through his son and through his word and through his spirit. So we need to be students of his word. We need to spend time reading the letter that God has written to us and the instructions that he has given to us. We need to spend time talking with him, praying with him, meditating, focusing on his word and then obeying that. Some people may say, well, how do you really know? How can you be sure that you know God? Well, in 1 John it says, we can be sure that we know God if we obey His commands. Anyone who says, I know God, but does not obey His commands, is a liar. There's no truth in Him. His life does not match His words. So my prayer for Apex is that we will know God and that by knowing him, we will love him. By loving him, we'll obey him. And then we'll live out the life and the purpose that he gave for us, and that is to praise and honor him in everything that we do.